Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Good morning, good morning, good beautiful morning. My name is Andrea Simintov, and I'm speaking with you from Jerusalem. You're listening to Pull Up a Chair on Israel, Newstalkradio.com. We have full house this morning. Baruch Hashem. Wait, full house this morning, full house this evening, because I can't forget that people that are listening in the U.S. and Canada trying to look at this country list it's way late at night and it's early early morning in the uk um good morning indonesia nice to have you with us today cyprus of course i would expect no less switzerland the netherlands colombia is listening in uh bon martin france egypt the virgin islands and we get the u.s again okay great today i don't want to waste time i realize Oh my gosh, everybody, it's happening. Corona be damned. We're standing at the footsteps of heaven, and we are in the last month of a fascinating year. And it is, um, it's almost the Yomim Noorim, the days of awe. They're standing upon us, and um, we have to get ready. And that's what today's show is about. What we can, it's about weight loss, but not physical weight loss, emotional, the things that are bogging us down because we've got big demands from heaven. We've got big requests. We're raising our fists in the air and we're saying, hey, God, here's my needs list. Um, Are we worthy? Are we ready? Of course we're worthy. But what we can do to look better as we stand at the precipice of hope, the precipice of his mercy, and the precipice of all things good. Yeah, you heard it from me. It's all going to be good. And before we take a break, I have more breaking news about me and my health. I'm healthy, I'm healthy. Okay, so this is Andrea Simintov. I'm so happy you're listening in today. Listen to the love show, the hate, the um, the hope show, and I'll speak with you on the other side. Always challenging the status quo. Hello, I'm Rod Bryant on Beyond the Matrix here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. I want to encourage you to listen each week, every Wednesday at the same time, for an amazing show that will challenge you, inform you, and inspire. News, views, and wisdom for the nations here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Don't forget, Beyond the Matrix every week, Wednesday, here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. We're back. Andrea Simintov, pull up a chair, IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, the place to be for the for the skinny, the real skinny. Okay, so um, <laughs> I get up this morning, I get up to start the show to get together my notes, to think about what holiness we're going to share together. And of course, I look at the phone. <laughs> And I get a message from our erstwhile Mizrad Habriyut, the National Health um, Administration, telling me I may have been exposed to COVID. You know, it doesn't mean you get the COVID. It means that, again, oh my gosh, I went somewhere like almost two weeks ago. Anyway, I'm in quarantine, what we say in Hebrew. Here's your, your vocabulary list for the corona year. Bidud, isolation quarantine. I'm in Bidud now for only another two days. I had to go and return phone equipment to a place that when I got there, I found out I wasn't supposed to return it in the first place. They were just supposed to come and pick it up. So I went out for no reason, except there's never no reason. Okay. I don't have the hotline to heaven. And um, I get this notice this morning. So again, it's writing notes to, um, you know, (laughs) getting notes and 
uh, that I am in isolation, which is fine. Guess what? Today is Erev Shabbos. Tomorrow, today, tomorrow, Erev Shabbos, the eve of Shabbos. I did my shopping. Hey, hey, I must have known. I must have had Navua. Um, Navua, the gift of prophecy. So you gotta, I, I still have the English. So that is it. And the other thing, whether we are sleeping, once we get up, the building is getting up because Rosh Hashanah is coming. And this is a very different year. I know the synagogues are tripping all over each other to figure out how the heck um, are they going to handle or what are they going to do with um, the congregants. Are we going to have in-synagogue davening prayer? Are we going to have outside? Are we going to have it on patios? The weather here is very beautiful. And it's a scary time. And Ronnie and I have made the decision, um, painful decision, that we are not going near the synagogue. We haven't been to Shul, Beit Knesset, in a long time. And it's um, it's very sad. So he went out and he got a chauffeur, the ram's horn. And apparently in his youth, my husband must have been quite the tutor on the ram's horn. Shh, between us, not so, not so much now. And every morning he's getting up and he's practicing blowing the ram's horn. I keep seeing it like a scene, a bad scene from the Ten Commandments with Edward G. Robinson and Charlton Heston and Ronnie, my husband, blowing the chauffeur, calling in the masses. So um, if you hear <laughs> if you hear the sound of something that sounds like a a ram dying on the range. You know that Ronnie's at it again. Okay. Um, chat room is open, people. Send me a note. Tell me a note. Let me know where you're listening in from. We have such an eclectic crowd. Really, this, the world has grown very small, beautifully small, lovingly small, if for no other reason than my audience here. You guys are the best. Drop me a note. You don't have to talk. You don't have to interact. I know it can be scary. I'm told quite often. All right. Here, well, some of my notes here that I said. Okay, so I talked to them and be dude. Ronnie's blowing the chauffeur. Yeah. All right. Reactions. Reactions are choice. We have the ability to choose. There's a lot of things we can't choose. A lot of things we cannot control. We can't control what's happening all the time. I don't know about you. I can't control what's happening most of the time. But when we can't control what's happening... You know, you know where the challenge lies? Fabulous challenge. Controlling the way we respond. That's where our power lies. It's not a matter of when you have no choice, it's the best you can do. No, is that the best you can do? It's the best there is. We are powerful. We are created, but Selim Elohim, in the image of God, God has power. Well, so do we. We have the ish form. We speak ish. God speaks. We point ish. God points. We love ish. God loves. We can control our responses and be amazingly powerful. I bring this up because you may have noticed that I have been speaking very, very little about American politics because, actually, I have a story later on today I thought I would get to. Um, it's not really, it's, it shouldn't be a surprise to me, but apparently, let me just see where I found this little story here. Um, hold on, just stay with me. You know, I'm all over the map here. Yeah, 4%. 4% of today's Jews in America, um, is it 4%? 4% of American Jews consider Israel an important, that the Israel is the most important voting issue. 43% uh, of American Jews have health care at the top of their priority lists. Yeah, well, you know, I get it. Um, only 4%, this is a poll, a poll by the Ruderman Foundation. They're, they're, they're holy people. Jay Ruderman is an acquaintance, a close acquaintance. Okay, 4% of the Jewish voters, this is a quote from it, identify Israel as the first or second most important election issue. Some 43% prioritize health care, 28% prioritize gun violence, and 21% prioritize 
Social Security and Medicare. This is a different world for me. These are different Jews. They're not Israeli Jews. I'm an American Jew who chose to live in Israel, and I'm not going to address I'm not going to address the points of American politics, but you know what I am? I am going to address the rancor, the rage, the not getting it. You know, I I darted in and out of the um, Democratic National Convention, darted in and out of the Republican National Convention. And let me help you with this, people. The role of the DNC is to speak positively of democratic contributions, okay? That's the point. The point is to tout the democratic message. Um, The point is to celebrate democracy from a left of center, generally, view. Uh, Either far left, mid left, just a tad off left, a little bit conservative, whatever it is. But it's, it's not the Republican view. That's their job. Stop getting yourselves all in a snit, all right? The fact that it wasn't my team in particular, I have enough to say. You all know from listening to this show who my particular favorites are and my definite favorites are not. Now, let me help you with this one. The point of the Republican National Convention is to um, to promote, not have a speech impediment, Andrea, to promote a Republican agenda to try to convince voters to vote for Donald Trump in November. Okay, that's the big deal. That's it. Reactions are choice. If I hear people mocking Melania Trump's clothing, you could do better than that. Women. Let's be kind to other women. Women, let's stop mocking each other. Michelle Obama is not my friend. I'm sure that we would be very polite to each other at a PTA meeting. She wouldn't be my girlfriend because from what I've read and what I've seen, we don't agree on a lot of things. That's it. Is she admirable? For sure. Is she accomplished? Don't you dare try to bully me and take me take that away from me. Yeah, not my girlfriend. I have heard such rabid nastiness to both about both of these first ladies, one former, one current. Shame. Reactions are choice. And remember, if you don't let go. If you don't release those reins of rage, I don't care who the president is. He's only a puppet. I promise for all of you dancing and saying how great Barack Obama was. No, he wasn't. He was a puppet. Donald Trump is a puppet. A puppet of time. I am. You are. We do our best. We are born to love. We are born to heal others. We are born to give because we can never get that part wrong. And guess what? When you give, 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 you can never run out of stock. I'm asking all of us today to go through our relationship roster and cancel debts. Put red lines X out who owes us what apologies we're waiting for, what money we're waiting for, what dignity we're waiting to have bestowed upon us. My friends, all of us, and I'm speaking to myself and about myself as well. We are standing at the threshold of his mercy. We are standing at the the footstool of kindness. We're created in his image. And we must use this opportunity to find favor in his eyes and to demonstrate our worth, to demonstrate that we get it. All we have to do is get it and try. And even when we mess up along the way 
as long as we're in the forgiving game, the loving game, the keep that hate out of my orbit game, we'll receive. Andrea Semitov, I'll speak to you on the other side. Hello, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Did you know this psalm and many others were composed by a Jewish shepherd and musician who later became a king? Would you like to know some of the inner meanings of psalms to help you connect with God and strengthen your soul? An exciting and easy to read book is now available, which will help you do just that. Software for the Soul, Psalms for Everyone, available on Kindle, Audible, and Amazon.com. Software for the Soul. Modesty at the beach? It isn't just about body image. It's about feeling good. Modest swimsuits so we don't get burned by the sun. So we won't get ogled by strangers. So we'll feel free to express ourselves without the need to expose ourselves. Let Marcy Modest help you to cover up what you want, how you want. Made in Israel. Visit MarcyModest.com. That's M-A-R-S-E-A Modest.com. And get a 10% discount on your first purchase. And we're back. Andrea Semenov. <laughs> I just stop laughing. Andrea Semenov, pull up a chair, IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. You know, I'm laughing, I'm laughing, and suddenly I said, oh my gosh, everything's so bleak. Everybody's in a funk. The world is changing. If I hear the name again, Fauci, Dr. Fauci, if I hear again the name, the COVID virus, and they're working on the vaccine, and things, and I think Brazil, Brazil has achieved herb, herb, herd, um, immunity, they herd mentality. And um, I, I just, it's all okay. It's a good day. We're in a good moment. We're together. We're all listening together. We're working it out together. We're not going to cure it. We're not going to fix it. We're not going to resolve our issues. But being part of the loving process means that we're okay. And okay is very, very good. Um, We were talking about forgiving and forgetting. I was talking about forgiving and forgetting. And I can remember, you know, until the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, the former prime minister, oh, he was the prime minister at the time. I remember I had just made Aliyah. It was the autumn, late autumn of 1995, and there were bumper stickers all over, we will not forgive, we will not forget. And it was followed soon after by the evacuation um, from Gaza. We will not forgive, we will not forget. It comes to mind at this time of year because Um, we're so preoccupied, or I would hope that we are preoccupied as both the Jewish nation and indeed the world in requesting heavenly forgiveness for our own personal failings, for our transgressions, yeah, that maybe we should take a more personal and focused look at forgiving and forgetting. Um, let's just see, you know, Rabbi Avigdor Miller, um, in his, uh, Sefer, his book, Rejoice, O Youth, I actually found this on page 292, <laughs> you know, don't say I don't do my homework, um, he explains how truly powerful and significant is the influence of evil inclination, we call it in Hebrew the Yitzer 
hara, um, our, yeah, the evil inclination. You know, if men were not, it's quote, if men were not blinded by the evil inclination, they could not avoid seeing the truths. They would recognize God from the overwhelming and incontrovertible demonstration of plan and purpose everywhere in the world. They would recognize man's role as the sole recipient of God's unbounded kindliness. They would understand the end purpose of the afterlife, and they would see the true function of life as the pursuit of virtue and perfection. It gets back, my friends, to the introductory remark I made. Oh, I, I threw the paper over my shoulder, forgive me, about if we just focus on giving, on healing, on kindness, our storerooms, what do they say about uh, wells that, that wells that keep replenishing, the waters rise up from the center of the earth and they always fill the oceans? Where is all that water coming from? Well, it's the same thing with mitzvot, with the commandments and the giving and the beauty. It's the same thing with reaching out. If we're keeping a tally, he owes me. She said they didn't. Oh, I promise you. I promise you. You will feel the schmutz. You'll feel the dirt. And then when you stand before the throne of heaven and say, this is how I would like the year ahead to look. How will you feel? Um... Oh, came across this adorable quote. <laughs> it's a little kooky, a little corny. My son, Natano, would absolutely tell me how cheesy I'm being. Ma, ma, check out the Kool-Aid. But I came across this. It said, a speeding motorist fails to enjoy the glories of nature along the highway. Slow down. Save gas. Enjoy the creations of Hashem. What are we racing for? What are we running to? We've got glory in our Dalid Amot, the four walls of our homes. We've got it there. Friend of mine, and I say this really from the depth of my heart, I met this fellow. You know, you can just imagine, Andrea. Here, wait, I'm moving my papers. Hear the papers moving? Yeah. Okay. I met this fellow, my friend Sean. I met him and his wife, he and his wife in a mall in South Africa. Okay, we were just all shopping, buzzing around the mall, and I ran into Sean, and they were this adorable couple. Um, Claudia, her name's Claudia. Sean and Claudia. And I don't know why we got to talking. I think I was visibly orthodox. I was wearing one of those big head coverings and my long skirt. And Sean and Claudia were a very beautiful couple, and... In South African, I couldn't get over that they still use this terminology. My daughter said to me, I said to her, you know, he looks Indian. He looks this and that. And she, and she said, well, I think he's Indian and she's colored. I said, colored? Who uses that term? And apparently in South Africa, there are still people being called colored. Anyway, I became immediate friends with Sean and Claudia. And they have these most Adorable children, a little rambunctious. Okay, I'm just telling you now, Claude, if you're listening in, and your kids were nuts. And they were just lovely. And we developed this friendship mostly online. I'm looking forward to visiting. And they're both devout Christians. And Claude and Claudia, maybe I shouldn't be, I mean, Sean and Claudia, Claude and Claudia, too. They have this lovely marriage and they post a lot about marriage. And I love this because I have to tell you, truth is truth. Clarity is clarity and holiness is holiness. And living a moral life and living a clean life and living a life that celebrates heaven's tomorrow is something that we can all strive for. And it absolutely crosses color barriers, claims to different faiths, even political party. And I just wanted to share this with you because I absolutely celebrate this. For marriages, couples, so e eager to call it quits and throw in the towel to your relationships because everything isn't perfect. Here is some food for thought. 
lifelong commitment is not what most people think it is. It's not waking up every morning to make breakfast and eat together. It's not cuddling in bed until both of you fall asleep peacefully at night. It's not a clean home filled with laughter and lovemaking every day. It's someone who steals all the covers and snores. It's slam doors and a few harsh words at times. It's stubbornly disagreeing and giving each other the silent treatment until your hearts heal. And then forgiveness. It's coming home to the same person every day that you know loves and cares about you in spite of and because of who you are. It's laughing about the one time you accidentally did something stupid once. That's me, my little editorial comment. It's about dirty laundry and unmade beds without finger pointing. It's about helping each other with the hard work of life. It's about swallowing the nagging words instead of saying them out loud. It's about eating the easiest meal you can make and sitting down together at a late hour to eat because you both had a crazy day. And when you have an emotional breakdown and your love lays with you and holds you and tells you everything's going to be okay and you believe them, it's about still loving someone, even though sometimes they make you absolutely insane. Loving someone is not easy. Sometimes it's extremely hard, but it's amazing and comforting and one of the best things you'll ever experience. I want to thank my friend, Sean, for this morning's Torah, and I encourage all of us who are without a partner at this time of life to maybe Let's all let go of our respective angers, respective sadness, respective finger pointing and become vulnerable and porous and ask for those partnerships that are absolutely flawed, gap toothed and wonderful. OK, last time, remember, we mentioned that Elul, Aleph Lamed Vav Lamed stands for Ani Lidodi Vidodi Lee. It's our engagement period. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. The month has arrived in awe, anticipation, and subdued excitement. Let's not be too busy in getting ready and setting our tables. Let's not be too connected to our computers. Let's not be obsessed with the COVID numbers, let's be absent-minded and available. Remember, the politics are there. The domestic and foreign strife is there. <laughs> Just understand, it's there. But it's our opportunity to charge our life batteries, allowing us to create new function in this upcoming Tishrei, the month of Tishrei, and in the months beyond. I know that I need recharging, and I'm plugging in now, and together with you, we're all plugging in, and this is Andrea Simintov, plugged in, and ready to meet you on the other side. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel. Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom, I'm Natalie Zapinski. 
Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Okay, Andrea Semitov, pull up a chair. We are back. I want to preface this, and um, thank you. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for your notes in the chat room. Thank you for writing me letters occasionally. I love them. I read each one. Andrea at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, just by the way. And um, I'm grateful. Thank you. Elul, again, we have Parsha. We'll see if we can get to that today. But again, I was lying in bed last night and I'm thinking, I don't know, everything feels so the same. And if not for COVID, what would I be doing now? Oh, we'd be planning and making my menu planning. And who are we going to for the meals? And did you hear the second night of Yantif, the second night of the holiday, is actually on Shabbos. And there are all these strictures with Shabbos. And I said, you know, I forgot. Clients are coming in and out and saying, Shana Tova, wishing me Shana Tova. What do you mean? That's another four months off. No, it's not. I think it's two weeks. Two weeks we're talking about. So again, as I said, you know, it's arrived with all of it. And here I am speaking about standing at this threshold of awe. There are many who love the parable of the king being in the field. It's a famous midrash. Um, The king is in the field. This is the time when God comes down to us and is here and available to us. Not my favorite, um, not my favorite imaginative um, uh, issue. I don't really, I'm not big on midrash. So anyway, so what I wanted to talk about was Elul a little bit, this beautiful month. That's a gift for us. It's all a gift. But it's not the month of quick fixes. There's a demand involved. It demands of us small increments. Please, nobody should listen to me this morning from Jerusalem and say, oh, it's impossible. I'm such a mess. I'm so unworthy. I'll never get it. I was so horrible this year. How can I now get ready for atonement? Yeah, you can get ready. Because we're in a good moment. We're in a good second. If you are just all right now, then you're in a good place to start. Small increments. Gradual improvements in how we behave, how we dress, how we speak. This sudden ripping at our kishkes, all or nothing approach to self-improvement. Like some kind of a crash diet. Desperate, impulsive, you know, impulsivity. It's only going to make us more disappointment. We're only going to find ourselves failing and it's going to create an inner frustration. Don't do that to yourselves. The Talmud um, records for us a number of instances where people who perform the most terrible, most heinous acts, they suddenly completely regretted them and they repented from those acts and immediately gained immortality for their souls. There's a 180 degree turn when, you know, if you're going to do a 180 degree turn, when you are driving at high speed on a Kvishesh here in Israel, on the sixth highway, you are going to have a fatal accident. There is no doubt about it. No matter how necessary or commendable that you turn might be. The month of Elul seeks a change of commitment, a change of direction in your thinking, a change of attitude towards our lifestyle, but seeks it in gradual ways, healthy ways, indeed, dare I say, normal ways. In fact, Elul is the height of normal of how to behave as a decent human being at home, in the workplace. On the road in our cars, in our synagogues, should we ever get back in there, 
in the marketplace. The highest expression of commitment to both God and the Torah lies in the small things in life. In the words of Rashi, in those things that a person unwittingly crushes under one he, under one's heels. Elul teaches us that only by paying attention to the small things in life can we adequately prepare ourselves for the greater challenges of life and the new year that is certainly coming our way. Oh, the sounding of the shofar. I tried to get Ronnie to blow it for all of us this morning, but he's a very modest individual. He's also not so good at it yet. But the sounding of the shofar in the month of Elul, it lends itself to the sense of immediacy and tells us that Elul is far bigger, far greater than any Hollywood epic extravaganza. You know, the small things never are a big deal, but Jewish tradition has chosen to make a big deal out of Elul. Maimonides, Maimon in Hebrew, who famously compared the sounding of the shofar in Elul to a wake-up call. Imagine for a moment, if you've never heard Google, put in Google the sound of the shofar, and imagine standing immobile at the foot of Sinai, shoulder to shoulder, listening to the clarion call from heaven. But it's more than a wake-up call. It's a sound that's jarring while it's soothing. It reassures us that we're home and that we belong to the special group. But guess what? The sound is challenging. It demands of us direction. We feel our spirits growing in our chests, our bellies, our throats, behind our eyes with the pings that produce tears. They are incremental short sounds that lead to longer sounds. They denote serenity. They denote satisfaction. And they denote action. Elu reflects these ideas of overcoming, triumphing over the things that cause us pain, the relationships that aren't going our way, the dreams and the aspirations that are still not yet fulfilled. The chauffeur tells us we're redeemed. And Elul embraces us and says, I put the ring again on your finger. You're mine. There's a note of serenity at the end of the chauffeur blasts that tell us that there is redemption, both individually and indeed nationally. There are no shortcuts in that final note to that great tekiah. El serves as the entrance foyer, the prose door into the great Jewish palace, purpose, holiness, and indeed immortality, life as we know it, be damned. In the words of our fathers, prepare yourself in the foyer so that you may then enter the palace in a proper fashion. I cannot end today's show without talking about erecting fences. We had a terrible, terrible incident in Israel this week. Something has brought great shame to our nation without going into specifics, the terrible attack on a young woman by several men that brought great shame to the Jewish nation. 
So I want to talk a little bit about erecting fences, fences in our behaviors, raising children. Back to Elul, everyone is allowed, if not encouraged, to live a life that's unlimited, without restraints, without moral discipline. But Jewish society, there are homes where a fence has to be constructed. A fence needs, a protects a family, physically, morally. Some fences are too high and some not at all. It's obvious that knowing where, when, and how to create our moral fences that will safeguard our, I'm sorry, I'm getting teary, <clears throat> that will safeguard our Jewish homes. These are the main challenges of parenting and family dynamics. That was an aside, but I needed to share that. My friends, in this parsha, we're reminded that all behavior creates a ripple effect. It's the parsha, the portion of the Torah that talks about the impact of seduction, the impact of letting our evil inclination run amok. One of the listeners, LN, said, am I going to speak about um, the United Arab Emirates? No, there's people on the station who do it a lot better than me. But what I will talk about is how excited I got at realizing that with contact with the United Arab Emirates, I might get to the mall. I might see that heinous mall. No. Positive acts, tradition, Torah service, doing what we do best, wearing an emotional veil of modesty will bring goodness and kindness and unforeseen opportunity to all of us. Shabbat Shalom from Mivochach from Jerusalem. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the Israel News Talk Radio dot home page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel, plus little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.